Okay, Wildcats. Today we're looking at Wednesday, February 27th, attributes of rational functions on page 49. You would update your table of contents. Okay, now your table of contents are updated. Let's take a look at our notes. Graphing rational functions with attributes of rational functions on page 49. Graphing rational function steps. Step one, factor the expression. <laughs> Step two, identify the holes. Step three, find a vertical asymptote or asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to zero and solve for x. Step four, find the horizontal asymptote or asymptotes or the slant asymptote by using long division. Step five, find the x-intercepts or zeros by setting the numerator equal to zero and solving for x. Step six, graph the above information. Step seven, graph the critical points. All right, if you would, finish up your notes. All right, now your notes are updated. Let's take a look at our examples. Now, today we're just looking at the attributes. And tomorrow we'll look at the attribute, or I should say tomorrow at the next lesson, we'll look at the attributes and graph the rational function. All right, find the zeros, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptotes, and <laughs> Now the first step is you're going to factor. Now what we mean by factor is we think about what we can divide the two terms in this case by. So we have 4x minus 12. Well, we can divide them both by 4. So we're going to factor a 4 out from both terms. Well, 4x divided by 4 is 1x minus 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now, there's nothing you can do in the denominator factor, so it's just 1x minus 1, okay? Now, if there was holes, we would have x minus 3 divided by x minus 3, which would be equal to 1, okay? Since this doesn't divide and become 1, then we have no holes. Okay? So that's step two. All right. Our next step is to find the vertical asymptotes. So that's step three. By setting the denominator equal to zero. So x minus one equal to zero. So we add one to both sides. x equals one. Okay, now the next step is to find the horizontal asymptote or slant asymptotes by long division. So that's step four. So we're going to do long division. So we're going to divide x minus 1 into 4x minus 12. All right, now... What you need to ask yourself is, what do you multiply 1x by to give you 4x? Well, the answer to that is 4. The result on top of this division line right here is called the quotient. Okay. Now, the quotient, once we have it, we have either the horizontal asymptote or sine asymptote. Now, in this case, since there's no x, it's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. Okay, and then the last step is to find the zeros. So I should say here. So step 5, not the last step, step 5. Let's find the x intercepts by setting the numerator equal to 0. So we set 4x minus 12 equal to 0. So we add 12 to both sides. So we have 4x equals 12. We divide both sides by 4. x equals 3. So we have an x-intercept at 3, comma, 0. All right, so finish up example 1. All right, now let's take a look at example two. Now, first step is to factor. Now, 
There's nothing in the numerator factor. You just have 2x. But the denominator, we have what's called the difference of squares. So we can factor that. So to understand how to factor, we're going to draw a box. Now we know x and x make x squared. So we have x and x. And then we know that negative 2 times a positive 2 is negative 4. And notice how there's no middle term. And the reason being is x times 2 is 2x. And negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Well, these cancel, and you're left with x squared minus 4. So our factors are x minus 2, x plus 2. Okay. Now, there's nothing that divides and becomes 1, so there's no holes. Okay, so that's step 2. Now, step 3 is find the vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to 0, so x minus 2 equal to 0, and x plus 2 equal to 0. So we add 2 to both sides. So x equals 2, subtract 2 from both sides, so x equals negative 2. So there are our horizontal, or I should say vertical asymptotes. Okay, now step 4 to find the horizontal asymptotes or the slant asymptotes, we divide. So we have x squared. Now we need to add 0x because you want to represent all the powers of x. Minus 4 divided into 0x squared plus 2x plus 0. Again, you have to add the 0x squared and the 0 so that you have you have 3 terms here, you have 3 terms there. Okay. Now, to ask yourself, well, what do you multiply 1x squared to give you 0x squared? The answer to that is 0. That's the quotient. There's no x's, so it's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And then our last step is to find the zeros, or I should say the fifth step is to find the zeros. So we set the numerator equal to 0. So we have 2x equal to 0. Divide both sides by 2. x equals 0. So you have and intercept at 0, comma, 0. All right, if you would, finish up example 2. All right, now example 2 is finished up. Let's take a look at example 3. All right, first step is we need to factor. Now, we know since it's x squared, there's going to be two parentheses. Now, we know that x and x make x squared. Now, we need to find out what two numbers multiply to give you negative 6 and combine to be positive 1. Okay, so to do that, let's find all the combinations that make negative 6. So, negative 1 times positive 6 is negative 6. Now, negative 1 plus 6 is positive 5. That doesn't work. So now let's try negative 2 times positive 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 plus 3 equals positive 1. So we have the two numbers that multiply the negative 6 combined to be positive 1. So our factors are negative 2 and positive 3. Okay. Now that's all divided by x minus 2. Now notice, in the first two examples, this didn't happen. But here, x minus 2, x minus 2, divided by x minus 2 is equal to 1, because anything divided by itself is 1. So this is 1, so we have a whole. Our whole is where that occurs, so x minus 2 equal to 0. So we're going to solve for x, so we're going to add 2 to both sides. So x equals 2. 
but a hole is a point. So now we need to substitute 2 back into the equation. Now, this is where the hole occurs. So we're not going to plug it into the original, but what's left after that divides it and becomes 1. So dx plus 3. So f of 2, which equals the same as y, which is equal to 2 plus 3, which equals 5, because we plugged in 2 for x. So our hole occurs at the point 2, comma, And the hole, when it occurs, is an open circle like that. Okay? All right, now with step two. All right, now let's take a look at step three, is to find the vertical asymptotes. We find those by setting the denominator equals zero. Well, here, since that became one, the denominator is one, okay? So we would set 1 equals 0. That's not true. So there's no vertical asymptotes. And see again, that's a 1 right there. So the denominator is 1. Now here, because the denominator is 1, okay, you can't really divide 1 into x plus 3. It's just x plus 3. So there are no horizontal You can actually abbreviate or slant asymptotes. All right, so go ahead and finish up that example. All right, now that example three is finished, let's go ahead and take a look at example four. Oh, wait, almost forgot. I got distracted because there was no here, but I almost forgot step five. Okay, now, that was a close one. Almost forgot part of examples, but... I didn't, so let's get with it. All right, so to find the zeros, we set the numerator equal to zero. So the numerator in this case is x plus 3. So we set that equal to zero. We subtract 3 from both sides. So x equals negative 3. So we have a zero at negative 3 comma 0. Okay, so finish up example three. All right, now example three is finished up. Let's take a look at example four. So step one is the factor. Okay, now if it's factorable, we know it'd be two parentheses because x squared. All right, so we're looking for the two numbers that multiply together to give you 12 and combine to be seven. So let's start with 1 times 12 equals 12. 1 plus 12 is 13. That didn't work. So now 2 times 6 is 12. Well, 2 plus 6 is 8. That didn't work. So let's try 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 plus 4 is 7. That works. They multiply to give you 12 and combine to be 7. So our factors are x plus 3x plus 4. All right. So now, let's divide it by x minus 1. There's nothing we can factor. None of this divides and becomes 1, so there's no holes. So that's step 2. Step 3, we're going to find the vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to 0, so x minus 1 equal to 0. So we add 1 to both sides. So x equals 1 is the vertical asymptote. All right. 
Now, for the horizontal or sine asymptote, that's step four. We're going to divide x minus 1 into x squared plus 7x plus 12. So what we need to do here is add 0x squared plus x. Because if that has an x squared, this has an x squared. Okay, so now you ask yourself is, what do you multiply 0x squared to give you 1? The answer to that is nothing. And I'm going to double check to make sure. Nope, I made a mistake in this case. You don't actually have to do that. And I'm sorry. I know I just wasted a few seconds of your life. But here you ask yourself, what do you multiply x by to give you x squared? The answer to that is 1x. Okay. And now you multiply. 1x times 1x is 1x squared. And then 1x times negative 1 is negative 1x. Okay. Now here, when you do division, you subtract. So subtract. And when you subtract the negative, it becomes positive. That cancels. You're left with 6x. Oh, I'm sorry, 8x, because 7 plus 1 is 8, plus 12. And then you ask yourself, what do you multiply 1x by to give you 8? And the answer to that is plus 8. The quotient is now completed. You have an x, so it's a slant asymptote. Now, I know I made a mistake, and this is complicated, but don't worry. We're going to go over quite a few of these to help you understand it, okay? So if you don't understand this quite yet, don't worry. We're going to keep going over problems like it, okay? So then your slant asymptote is y equals 1x plus 8. All right, so if you would, finish up your examples and start working on your assignment and have a wonderful Wildcat day.